In order to construct a new theory, we usually start with the Lagrangian or the Lagrangian density of the system. The reason for this is that if our system has some symmetries, then the Lagrangian will also respect these symmetries. In this video, we'll show you a very simple Lagrangian, the one of the Dirac equation. It looks like this. Let's investigate every part in detail. First, the most important part, the Dirac spinner. This is the wave function of a spin one half particle. It has four components that can be interpreted in many different ways. One intuitive picture is to describe them as the spin up and spin down states of a particle and the spin up and spin down states of its antiparticle. Like the wave function in the Schrodinger equation, this is the object we want to calculate. But the spinner psi does not come alone. On the left, we have another term that looks quite similar. This is actually the complex conjugate of the spinner. More precisely, this is called the Dirac adjoint. It is composed of the Hermitian conjugate of the spinner and a gamma zero matrix. The Hermitian conjugate means that this is now complex conjugated and transposed, therefore a row spinner. Don't call it a vector, even though it looks similar to a four vector. And the gamma zero is needed to build Lorentz invariant terms. The lowercase m is the mass of the particle we want to describe. So if the spinner's psi stands for an electron, then m is the mass of an electron. Finally, id slash. The slash notation was introduced by Richard Feynman and is a convenient way to abbreviate a term like gamma mu something mu. i times a derivative is simply the quantum mechanical way of expressing the momentum of a particle in position space and the gamma matrices make sure that the energy of the particle follows the relativistic energy momentum relation, as we showed in the previous video. And that's pretty much it for the Dirac Lagrangian. Thanks for watching.